and to start to to see that that these are projections these are ideas in my own mind that I have projected begins to to give that sense of of that there is an I that that is distinct and that is um, um, is whole that is capable of observing those thoughts without believing in them. So is it just intention and willingness to do it that way and to look at it that way that's required? Mm -hmm. To not order it. I mean, you know, to be able to say, um, to free associate with some ideas. Um, for instance, morning, chairs, Beverly, David, microphone, um, couch, sunshine. I mean, here we have a stream of thoughts, just a stream of thoughts that, that I verbalized. And to get a sense of, of an observer or something that is, that is able to watch those thoughts without ordering, without, you know, reading meaning into the thoughts. For instance, Beverly, sitting in chair, speaking into microphone, looking out at sunshine. I mean, all of those have a reference point to Beverly. Mm -hmm. Beverly, in that sense, is the subject Beverly, the person with those with those eyes, is, is able to look at the microphone, to look at the couch, the chairs, at the out at the sun, and there's the subject-object split, as opposed to those all, including Beverly, being a stream a stream of thoughts in the mind. Without an association or a connection, I mean, the, these these thoughts, there is no association to them. It's impossible to, in reality, to link up false thoughts or to to associate false things, false thoughts. That's what the the deceived mind attempts to do. It attempts to associ associate um, thought forms and constructs meaning based on those thought forms and, and in its own sense that's that's how the world is made up. It's it's combinations and links of thought forms. You know. Just as you went from naming cow's chair, microphone, sunshine to Beverly sitting in a chair, looking at the microphone, looking out the window at the sunshine. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was the whole point of that, was yeah. that, that the individual components are then tried to, are put, or you try to put them in some kind of combination or order. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that's what the mind tries to do, take mm -hmm. the isolated thought forms and associate them. And then from that, to arrive at some kind of meaning or interpretation. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is wrong, I mean, or that is false, is that that the mind can attempt to do that, but but it just continues to sleep. It's like trying to do something that that can't be done. Because they are because they are in individual isolated thought forms. Is that what you're saying? Well, they they have no meaning in and of themselves. But only in combination with other thought forms. Do they seem to take on some meaning? Yeah, there's a thought form. I mean, if you think of a, of a chair, I mean, immediately there are all kinds of associations that come into a chair. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, in a sense of, well, you could say chairs were made for bodies to sit in, or um, different types of chairs, or 
um, different weights of chairs. Obviously, when you go to a pavilion or a picnic, sometimes you take a lawn chair along instead of your reclining chair because mm -hmm. it's much too heavy. Um, there are, with everything in the world, the way that the ego or the deceived mind works is it, it has all kinds of meanings and things associated um, into um, the thought form. I mean, it, the thought form is associated with a lot of other thought forms. And you're saying what we're moving toward is is letting go of those associations. Yes. All of, of all, all of those the associations. associations. Yes. Because all of those associations are very relative. Mm -hmm. you know. And variable. I mean, your associations are different than my associations yes. with the same item. Yes. A so child could, you know, could grow up playing Little League Baseball and um, um, just have a, a fondness for uh, a particular, you know, wood bat um, that he's played with for years and everything. Uh, the same bat um, could have been could be used in a in a home in an abusive situation um, by a, for instance, a father who um, goes into tirade and and knocks um, things down with it and puts holes in the wall and smashes the TV or strikes someone with it, you know, that, that that bat just then has different associations for the, for the child, um, the fond memories of, the, you know, the smell of the, the wood maybe, or the, the crack of the bat when he hit a home run or so forth, versus those other associations which may not be so pleasant. But the whole point is, is that they're all associations. That are, that are being made there. And they're all unreal. And they're all unreal. That's why there's some, some attempt to let go of any associations whatsoever. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is pretty inconceivable to my mind right now how that would be. Mm -hmm. if, if I let go of all my associations with everything. I mean, it just, the very thought of it seems like it would be immensely chaotic and disorienting and um, disconcerting, unstabilizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to the deceived mind, once again, there is a chaos perceived within. In other words, two thought systems that have no meaning point. There's a split that uh, is is very horrifying and, and that gets projected out and, and, and the ordering of, of these thought forms is its attempt to bring some sense of order and sanity back to the mind. But by associating the thought forms and reading um, meaning in, and constructing its own, literally its own version of reality based on these associations, it, it covers over um, the light in the mind, or the miracle, which sees the sameness of everything. I mean, the ordering and the associating of thought forms we're talking about obscures the sameness of, of, of the thought forms. That, that, that it, regardless of what the thought forms are, there is a meaning, there is a purpose that, that can be given to them that is completely new and completely fresh every instant that has nothing to do with the association of, form, of the thought forms. It has nothing to do with the relative meanings that have been read into those. You know, that there is an intensity when we come to, together to discuss, as we're doing, that, that takes over, that can take over for the self-consciousness of, oh, you know, censoring the words or, you know, um, an awareness or distraction of the, the microphone or so forth. Or with the, the boys, um, you know, there's a, there's an, there's an intention, there's a purpose that can be, can so much take over, it is so fresh and new that the attention of the mind is so focused on that, it is the mind has become so single-minded that whether the boys are running 
around the house or whether there's noise or no noise or whatever disappears or could just fades away that the mind is capable of, of focusing his attention on a different purpose just as if you were in a crowd and um, speaking to someone how you could focus your mind on your attention on the, the person that was speaking across from you and draw it away from the background noise, the other people speaking in proximity or the song that was playing on the radio or um, a train that was going by. I think the thing to do initially is just to get very, very focused before beginning anything else and just have that intention be all that there is. Because I have experienced how how that how that is and how that how powerful it is and how everything else just fades away in the face of a really strong intention and purpose. Fades away or comes to meet it, whichever way you want to look at it. So that, that all there is is that one intention. That everything is there to support it. Nothing, nothing can be there to detract from it. Mm -hmm. Yes, for for there to be a conflict, and there there have to has to be opposition um, to something. You can see what what freedom there is, what release there is in this idea of of transcending this subject object split. You know, if the mind can stay focused on on that intention, on that one intention, and not become distracted or not allow its attention to wander back to the I'm a I'm the subject and this is you know, this is the object, or this is the person I'm speaking to, this is the, the uh, situation that I seem to be in, and so forth. If you can stay back into a detachment from from all those thought forms, that purpose, that intention, then can be held in mind. And, and you know, we could perhaps get into a little bit of, of this... Uh, subject-object split by saying that the the subject, the small self, the me, you know, the personhood in this world is is seen to be very distinct and very unique and very important. And all of the goals, all of the expectations, all of the thought form associations and meanings, the relative meanings that that are read into the world spring from this subject-object split. So that if I have career goals, if I have appearance goals, I, I want to look a certain way. If I have asp aspirations and ambitions, ev everything that becomes a goal or something to be striven for in this world springs from that subject-object split in the mind. Is that is that just another way of speaking of the self-concept? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you could say that the self-concept then becomes the point of reference for everything that's perceived. Yes. Self-concept, we could say, is a construction, is a, is a making up of these associated thought forms. I perceive myself as a person. Where am I? I'm a person in a living room. I'm a person in a particular city. We could say, for example, Cincinnati. In a particular country. We could say, for example, America on this particular planet, Earth, and so on and so forth. Um, 
the construct also includes um, reading meaning.